it's kidding season here at Twin Pear Farm. Um, and this is the time of year when we have some hard decisions to make. Um, we will have a lot of babies born and we need to decide who our keepers are going to be. We absolutely cannot keep them all. Um, this is the big challenge um, when you start breeding dairy goats is deciding who stays and who goes. Um, so the first thing I have to say is that we won't be picking our keeper kids based on color of their fur. Uh, we will not be picking them based on spots. We will not be picking them based on the color of their eyes. We will be picking them based on their dairy goat confirmation, how close they are to the standard we'd like to see in our dairy goats. Um, now, when you have a lot of kids to evaluate, what I like to do is spend time sitting with the kids. Um, I will take a clipboard and I will write down each kid's name or ID, whatever you're recognizing them as. Um, and then without judgment, I just watch them play. I just watch them move around and I make notes. Um, I also like to shoot video um, so that I can go back and reference that and you can, you know, pause and go backwards um, when you're looking at each kid that might just literally be running past, past the camera. Um, that can be really helpful too. Um, I do not like to judge kids based on a single still photo. Um, the best way to look at any animal is on the move. So these are AEDGA's um, linear traits um, that they use for scoring in linear appraisal. A lot of this is not yet relevant um, because so much of it is about the udder which we don't have in our kids yet. Um, but we can look at some of these other elements here um, to help us as we evaluate our kids. Now mind you, this is not a scorecard from five being the worst, 45 being the best. It's actually um, a scale and just showing where an animal is on that scale. So don't be tricked by looking at those numbers. I'm gonna ask you to just ignore those numbers for right now. So, um, Looking up at strength, when I am looking at kids, I am looking for um, animals that have their front legs wide set apart. I think of it as an H um, in their chest. I don't want to see legs that are close together or bowing in together like this. I want them to, literally, I kind of think of that as looking strong, yeah. Um, so in dairiness, what is this is referring to and what I will look for in my kids is, um, a nice long lean neck that's uh, something I quite like um, and I'm also going to be looking for the front legs to be set under the shoulders um, in rump angle I am going to be looking for a kid that has a long length of rump from their hip bones to their pin bones um, and doesn't have a very steep rump but personally, I am at this age more interested in the length of their actual physical bones from hip bones to pin bones. Um, I will also be looking for who has the widest um, rump out of the kids. I'm going to be looking personally for a quite, quite wide, quite wide rump. That's something that, that I want to see. Um, and when I'm looking at rear legs, legs like this are considered posty. Uh, this is not desirable. It's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a rear leg that has nice, what's called rear leg angulation, which literally means this curve of the leg that hits right here in the hock and that the rest of the leg is straight down to the pasterns. So getting into that as well, I want to see pasterns that are up nice and upright. I think of them like little rectangles going up, not low and flat. So we have a pair of sisters here who are five days old. Um, and I don't want to even bother attempting to evaluate them before that because um, they are still unfolding. Their backs are all hunched up. They're wobbly on their feet. You can't really see how they move yet. Um, so give them a little bit of time before making any snap judgments. So the very first thing you wanna do, um, even before you evaluate anything about their confirmation, is look to see if they have any 
defects that would automatically be something you do not want to propagate in your herd. So make sure they only have two teats. Um, you do not want to have uh, extra teats in there or misplaced orifices, um, something you would not want to continue in your herd or in anybody else's herd. Next, you want to make sure and confirm that they do not have an undershot jaw, which is called parrot mouth. That is something else you would not want to continue breeding with. So, looks like we have some pretty solid, nice little, nice little faces here. We'll check and make sure sister looks the same. Yep, so they passed the basic test. Next, I'm gonna look at length of body. We can see that it looks like this sister might be a hair longer than her other sister, though I would say both these does have a nice length of body. Then what I'm going to do is looking at the overview, what I want to see in my dairy goats is that they are wedgy, meaning that in this case, I'm looking to see if they are narrower in the shoulders and then getting wider to their hip bones. You can literally do that by feeling and watching your fingers. And yeah, they're wiggly, it's okay. So you wanna see a triangle here. You don't want this to be a rectangle. Next, I'm going to look at their length from hips to pins, which is literally, we saw it on that drawing. Hip bones to pin bones. That's actually some nice length there. I like that. Let's see her. Hers is quite long too. I'd say it's actually a little bit, a little bit longer. You can very easily see that this doe here is deeper bodied, meaning she has more depth in the barrel. She is also bigger, just in general, overall weighs more than her sister. So her sister may gain that over time. But for right now, her sister has a little less depth in the barrel. She's just a little less beefy in general. And I would say they both got some attitude. Yes, you do, girls. So while I'm watching them run around, I'm gonna look at their front ends. And I want to see if their front legs, <laughs> you guys are putting on a show, are located directly under their shoulders. I feel like this doe's legs are a little bit of a hair forward. And this one might be the same. This one seems to be my sister. A little bit further back, I would say a little bit more squarely under, under her shoulder blades. That's great. Um, <laughs> while they're on the move here, Let's see if we can get a look at their width between their front legs. This is why I say sometimes you just gotta sit and watch because it's really hard to catch them. Um, gotta get them to chill out for a minute. Apparently these two are going to duel. I would say these girls are about the same with the part in the front end. But I don't see any legs bowing in, so that's good. Um, next, I'm going to look to see how the pasterns of these kids look. Are they nice and upright and boxy? I am quite liking the pasterns on both of these kids. Those look good to me. Um, I absolutely love looking at their rear legs. A beautiful scoop there. A really, really nice rear leg angulation down to that hawk and then straight down from there. That looks fantastic to me. Not surprised at all. Their mom has fantastic rear leg angulation. So I'm glad to see that pass through. Um, the other thing I'm going to look for is to see if in their front leg do the does toe out. So towing out is literally when 
instead of their front hoof facing forward, it's cocked out like that. That is something that will look very small when they are tiny and be hard to miss when they are adults and be something um, that you don't want to see in the show ring. It, it just can take you down from being in first place to second place if all other things are equal. You hit the fence, sweetie. So while they're on the move, I like to watch their shoulder blades. If I see a ton of movement in the shoulder blades as they're running around and I see big discs, those big triangles jutting up towards the sky, um, that would be pause for concern for me that we have the shoulders that are too loose. Um, now, mind you, everything else with the animal might be great, and so it might not be the end of the world. Um, but in general, we're looking for nice tight shoulders, which can be hard to come by in the Nigerian dwarf breed, especially. Um, also, when I'm looking at those front legs, I'm wanting to see them tracking straight forward on those legs, um, as opposed to um, what we call sort of waddling, paddling, paddling out on those front legs. Now, they're giving us a rear shot. Thank you, dears. I'm gonna be looking for width here. So this is the rump width. I have to imagine, will that be a nice wide rump to hang a big, beautiful udder under that will be giving birth with ease? And yeah, it really is this challenging. They're on the move all the time, all the time. Um, and then one thing that I really like to feel for in my kids is I like to feel their ribs. Now this is definitely easier done in comparison than by feeling one kid alone. What we want to feel is space between the ribs. We want more space is a good thing. Um, now, of course, on a kid, these are gonna feel very small and tight together almost no matter what, but you can feel a difference in the rib spacing. Now, one thing I'm noticing between these two is that this one has flatter flintier rib bones um, than this one, which feel a little bit more round. Flat and flinty is what we want in, in our dairy goats. Um, you also want to feel that these ribs are um, winging back on the when you feel their rib cage, not going straight down, which is what um, ribs do on a beef animal or a, a meat animal, I should say. You can also look at things like the wedginess of their head, meaning sort of the shape of this triangle of their head. Wedgie is a good thing. We like wedges on dairy goats. We like triangles. That, you know, you really need to think about what qualities and traits you are looking for in your own herd, not necessarily um, just picking based sheerly on score. Um, you need to say, you know, we really need to be working on that rump width, so I'm going to put that trait above all else. Um, or you might say, we have a problem with really loose shoulders, so I really need to focus on bringing in, keeping kids that have really nice, tight shoulders. Or you might say, we've had, we had a buck that introduced a bunch of towing out, and we really need to get towing out out of our herd. Um, there are a lot of different reasons to decide who stays and who goes. Um, but this, doing this, and just watching, if you have time, to let your kids grow and really um, observe them over time, um, you will be able to maybe make a little bit better decision. Um, but you might not have time and you might have to decide when they're quite small like this, um, who stays and who goes. So you just make your best judgment with the information you have at the time. So to recap, grab your pen and paper. Number one, look for defects. Are there problems with this goat that you do not want to be replicated in any breeding program, including your own? Then go on to look at length of body. Do they have a wedgy body? Look at their length from hips to pins. Then you want to see if they have depth of body, that depth in the barrel. Are their front legs positioned under their shoulders or too far forward? Look at their width between their front legs. Look at their pasterns. 
Are they nice up and high or are they too low and flat? Look at those rear legs to look for angulation. Does it have that nice curve to it or are they kind of posty? Towing out. See if those front legs, you can also check in their rear legs, are those toes turning out? Look at their shoulders on the move. Is there a lot of movement? Do they jut out of their body um, when they lean over or are they nice and tight? Are they walking straight forward on those front legs when they walk or are they paddling out when they walk? Look for that rump width. We want to see a lot of width in that rump for both uh, the udder they will carry in the future and also for ease of kidding. Feel those ribs and feel for open ribbing that is curving back. Um, look at that head and see if it is making a nice triangle creating a wedgy head. And remember that no goat is perfect, but focus on which traits are the improvements you want to see in your herd for this next season. Really nice straight front legs. Width between the front legs. Is your front legs too, sister? Um, looking at them from above, um, this one is definitely more wedgy than this one here. So picking out our keepers is very tricky and sometimes you hit it right on the money and sometimes you regret later who you let go, but you just have to make your best guess and sometimes you just have to follow your gut instinct about something. So if there's something small that's concerning you now, I can almost guarantee it's going to be a big something concerning you later. So best of luck. I hope you have lots of beautiful kids to pick from. And uh, let me know if you have questions um, as you go on and evaluate your kids and post them in the comments.